In this video, we're going to look at the first quadrant of the unit circle and finding some nice values for sine and cosine. All right, so before attempting this lesson, make sure you're comfortable with the Pythagorean theorem and our new definition for sine and cosine. All right, so we want to find exact values of sine and cosine without needing a calculator. So some nice values, meaning that we don't have to always put a bunch of decimal points or it's not kind of this big, ugly uh, expression. I something simple that we can write that says this is the value of sine and cosine for this angle. All right, so the first one we're gonna start with what are called the quadrantal angles because they break up the quadrants. All right, so we have our x, y plane. We have our unit circle, which is a circle of radius one. We have our 90 degree angle up here. 180 degree angle there, 270 here, and 360 there. Right, where do these angles hit the unit circle? So the 90 degree angle going straight up hits the unit circle at this point. And what is the value of that point? All right, well, the value is I haven't gone left or right at all from the origin, the starting point. So the point is x is 0. And I've gone up to the top of my circle. But the circle is a unit circle. And remember, unit means 1. So it has a radius of 1, and that's why. That is the point on the unit circle, 0, comma, 1. All right, so if I ask you sine of 90, remember sine is the y value, so sine of 90 is 1. All right, 180. All right, we've gone left to the left-hand side of the unit circle. We've gone all the way to the left of a circle. It's the radius, and that's going to be negative 1. And we haven't gone up or down at all, which means our y value is 0. All right, down here at 270, it's just the opposite of the 90 degree angle, so our x value is still 0, it's going straight down. But on the other side of the unit circle, which means we're at negative 1. I've right, gone down 1 instead of up 1. And 360 is just the opposite of 180. I've right, gone right 1, but we haven't gone up or down at all. all right, so these four quadrantal angles quickly give us some values of sine and cosine. So if I want to know cosine of 270, I look at 270, that dot, and I know the x value, 0. All right, so knowing these values, I can find sine and cosine quickly. All right, where does the 45 degree angle hit the unit circle? All right, I'm going to do this real quick because it's not something you have to do again. I right, but just to show you where these numbers come from. I have my unit circle. 45 degree angle looks like this, and it hits the unit circle at this x and y value. I want to figure out what are x and y. So what I'm going to do is make a right triangle, this green right triangle here. The width of this right triangle is x, because that's how far I've gone to the right. My height is y. And the hypotenuse is the least obvious one, but it's going from the center of my circle to the edge, which means it's the radius of my unit circle, which is 1. All right, so this is the kind of right triangle I have. Doesn't help when I do the Pythagorean theorem because there's an x and a y. But if this is a 45 degree angle, this is 90. That means this angle here also has to be 45 degrees. And if we have an isosceles triangle, the, the sides are the same. So x and y have to be the same value, which means I can rewrite this equation like that. And it's not something you'll have to redo. I just want to explain where these things are coming from. I can combine these x's. I can divide by 2. And then I can take the square root. All right, so a couple of things we have to do to get our final answer. One, when we take the solution to this equation, we get plus or minus, but it really only makes sense for our x value to be positive because we're going to the right. So we don't need the negative sign, so we can just leave it as the square root of 1 half. And now we just have to simplify the square root. All right, we can split up square roots over the division bar. The square root of 1 is 1. We need to rationalize the denominator, and I get the square root of 2 over 2. All right, so the x and y value where 45 degrees hits the unit circle is the square root of 2 over 2. Again, you don't need to know this whole process again. This is really the only part that's really important. All right, now let's do the same thing with a 30 degree angle. All right, so we have this. We have our unit circle. We have our 30 degree angle. And that hits our unit circle at some point, x comma y. And our goal is to find out the value of x and y. 
So I make my right triangle by drawing it down. I label it the exact same way as last time. And we have x squared plus y squared equals 1. There's two different ways you could do this problem. I'm going to show the way that kind of I learned it is this triangle looks like this. A 30 degree angle here, a right angle there, and this is 60. If I were to take this triangle and flip it, kind of reflect it over this line, that would also be 30, that would be 60, and also be a right triangle. But now if I think about the bigger triangle I created, all right, like that, this is one, y, y, one. That big yellow triangle is an isosceles triangle because this two 30s make a 60, so it's a 60, 60, 60 triangle. All the sides are the same, which means these two y's here have to be the same as this one and that one. So two y equals one, y is one half. Again, this is not something you have to redo. I'm just kind of explaining things. So this is now x squared plus one half squared equals one which is one fourth. If I subtract one fourth from both sides, I have to get a common denominator. One becomes four over four, and I get three over four. So x squared is three over four. I take the square root of both sides, and I get x is plus or minus the square root of three over four. Again, just like the last time, the equation says it could be plus or minus, but the situation where I'm talking about this x value uh, on the unit circle, only the positive makes sense. And then I can split up the square root over division. And the square root of 4 is 2. All right, so the x value is the square root of 3 over 2. The y value is 1 half. All right, so all of this, again, it's just explanation about the, where these numbers come from. The really important thing that you have to do for this lesson is this. All right, being able to fill in this kind of quadrant 1 of the unit circle so that we can quickly reference it for sine and cosine. All right, so that's talk about what the angles are first. All right, this is the zero degree angle. We haven't moved it all. The next one is the 30 degree angle. Then it's the 45 degree angle, the next one we talked about. We didn't talk about this one, but we'll see that it's actually related to one. This is 60 degrees. And up here is 90 degrees. All right, don't worry about these other blanks. So we'll talk about those later. All right, but then for each of these angles, we want to know where this angle hits the unit circle, because right, that's going to be important for sine and cosine. So where does zero hit the unit circle? All right, it's just going right. So the x value is one and the y value is zero. 30 degrees, we just did on the last slide, 30 degrees, we figured out the x value was the square root of three or two, and the y value is one half. 45 degrees, we figured out they're both the same value. 60 degrees, if you think about 60 degrees, when we made our right triangle for 30 degrees, there's a 60 degree angle up here. So if we know the sides for 30, we just flip them for 60. So 60 is just the flip of this 30 degree end. That's one half square root of three over two. And at the top, uh, we've gone up one and X is zero. All right, so these kind of 15 blanks, are gonna be five angles right, and the five points X and Y correct. All right, that is what your skill check is for this lesson. And it's basically just memorizing this. All right, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Those are kind of the nice angles that you've talked about with triangles before. So those aren't super hard to memorize. All right, and then the way I memorize these is you have to just get this point right. All right that should be reasoning. It's a unit circle, and you're going to the right. So your x value is 1, your y value is 0. All right, then from there, this starts at the bigger number, and it's going to go down. So the biggest number next, square root of 3 or 2. 2 is smaller than 3, so that's next. And then 1 half is next, and then it goes all the way down to 0. So the x values get smaller as you rotate around. The y values do the exact opposite, 0. The next biggest one is 1 half. 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, and then you're all the way to the end. So it just goes 3, 2, 1 for x's, 1, 2, 3 for y's. All right, and of course, they have square roots and stuff you have to memorize. Uh, but once you have this memorized, it'll take a little bit of time, but it'll make everything else in the future easier. But again, the whole point of this is now I can say sine of 45. Look at here, the y value squared of 2 over 2. All right, so just why we're learning this is that we can find sine and cosine values quicker. All right, so go ahead and practice this. It's not really practicing. It's just kind of doing this over and over again until you have it memorized. All right, you're just going to look at that. 
blank sheet that we had on the last slide and just fill in all the values.